In this video, I would like to go over several examples of calculating centers of mass, just so you can see what the calculations look like and some of the tricks that go into doing these calculations. So um, for the first example, let's suppose that we just have three particles that are located somewhere on this xy plane. So I'm going to um, put some coordinates on here like this. Okay, and let's say that one of the particles is over here. This one will be three kilograms. Maybe I'll put one over here that is 10 kilograms and then one over here that is four kilograms. Okay, and each of these tick marks is one meter. Okay, so to calculate the center of mass in this case, we could just use the formula. So we'll start with X. So the center of mass um, for the X case is just going to be the um, mass one. So I'm going to start from the top and work my way down, I guess. So three kilograms, that's at a position of negative one meter in the X direction. Okay, so that's that one. And then I'm going to do the next one, which will be the 10 kilogram one. So plus 10 kilograms. It's at a position of two meters. Okay, so just reading that off there. And then finally, I'm going to do the third one, which is the four kilogram mass at a position of negative two meters. Okay, so just reading off the X positions for those particles. And then I'm going to divide that by the total mass, which is going to be three kilograms plus 10 kilograms plus four kilograms. Okay, so if you plug that into a calculator, what you're going to get is um, 0 0.52 meters. Okay, so the um, center of mass is going to be somewhere on this line, roughly. Okay, in order to find the center of mass in the y direction, we just do the exact same thing, but with the y values instead of the x values. So starting with the three kilogram one, we'll take three kilograms. It's at a position of two meters. Okay, so I'm just reading off the y position, so right there. Then I'm going to do the 10 kilogram mass, which is at a position of one meter. So you can read that off here. And then finally, the four kilogram mass, which is at a position of negative one meters. And again, divided by the total mass, which is 17 kilograms. And if you plug this one in, you're going to get 0 0.71 meters. Okay, so the um, Y center of mass is going to be somewhere roughly on this line. Okay, so combining those two, we can see where they cross. And the center of mass then is going to be located right here um, at the intersection of the X center of mass and Y center of mass. Um, you can see it's maybe a little bit closer to the 10 kilogram particle than the others because the 10 kilogram particle is a little heavier. Okay, so that's it. That's how we do this. Um, for the second example, Let's say that we have um, an extended object um, like a dumbbell. Okay, so I'm going to kind of simplify what this looks like. Let's have a sphere over here and then a rod. And then I'll do another sphere on this side. Okay, and just to give this a coordinate system, let's say that this is um, zero and then I'll call this position negative seven and I'll call this position positive seven. Okay, um, and let's give the parts masses. So two kilograms for the left part, um, five kilograms for the rod and then 10 kilograms for the um, sphere on the right. Okay, so this could be a model for a molecule or something. It wouldn't have to be just a, a barbell. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is we want to use some symmetry. Okay, so I know for the left part, this two kilogram mass, the center of mass will be in its center because it's symmetrical. Likewise, the 10 kilogram mass is a sphere, so its center of mass will be in its center. And the five kilogram rod is also symmetrical, so its center of mass will be in its center. All right, so now if we want to um, do the calculations, we can treat this like three individual particles. Okay, so the um, center of mass is just going to be two kilograms times negative seven meters plus five kilograms times zero meters plus 10 kilograms times seven meters, all divided by 17 kilograms because that's the total mass. And if you do the calculation, then you're going to get 3.3 meters, which is going to be roughly here. And that's where the center of mass is. So that's the balance point of the system. If you threw this, that would be the point that acts like a particle. Okay, so the big takeaway here is use the symmetry properties. Um, if you have a rectangle or a sphere or a cylinder, you know the center of mass of that part will just be in its center. Okay, so let's try that. Um, let's say that we have an object that is kind of L-shaped. So let me give myself a grid. Um, and I'm going to do three this way, four this way. Um, and let's say that we have some shape that is an L like this. Okay, so three uh, meters on the bottom and four meters tall. Well, this might seem like a really hard problem, and there are a couple of ways you can approach it. So one is we could split it up into little squares. And so if I split this up into squares, then I have six squares, and I can just use the center of mass formula like we did before for each of those six squares and um, do the calculation in the x direction, do the calculation in the y direction, and we're done. But we can actually make this even easier, because look, if I break it into just two pieces, then I know that the center of mass for each of these two rectangles will be right in the respective centers. And I know these two um, objects have the same mass because they are both the same size and I didn't tell you that the density is irregular or anything like that. So essentially what we can do is we can just um, take the line connecting them and we know that the center of mass will be exactly halfway in between these two 
um, individual centers of mass for each half. Okay, so this is a really nice way to avoid having to do any calculations. I didn't even have to write down an equation. I can see that the um, x position for the center of mass is going to be one meter because it's halfway between a half and one and a half. And I can see that the y position is going to be at one and a half uh, because it's halfway between a half and two and a half. Okay, so we definitely want to consider the centers of those in order to find the centers of mass. But in this case, you don't even have to do a calculation. You can just skip straight to the answer. Okay, so that's a nice way to go. Um, the last example I want to do um, is another trick. So um, for this one, let's say that we have an object, circular disc, and let's say that we cut out another circle from it. Okay, so we're going to have this um, disc that is shaped like this. Okay, it's got this um, other circle cut out from it. Okay, so now um, one way to solve this would be to do an integral and try to find the exact center of mass that way, but it turns out that you really don't need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this as two parts. I'm going to treat this as the big circle, um, and then I'm going to treat it as um, also the small circle, but the small circle is going to have a negative mass. Okay, so instead of treating it as just the part that's actually there, I'm going to treat it as a full circle that is um, a little bit bigger, and the smaller circle that um, is removed from it explicitly. Okay, now I didn't give you any masses, but um, just based on the areas, the big circle has a mass of, let's say, four units, and the small circle will have a mass of negative one unit, all right? How do I know that? Well, the circle is going to, the small circle will be a quarter the size of the big circle. The radius is half, and the area um, goes like radius squared, so you can um, convince yourself that the area of the big piece is, you know, three quarters of the circle, and the area of the little piece is one quarter. So we just do this calculation. And let me also give a um, size here. So let's say that this is one meter, um, just so we have a scale. So if that's the case, then the, the center of mass is going to be located at um, four units of mass times zero meters, because the big circle is centered at the center, plus negative one unit of mass for the part that's removed, times one meter, divided by the total um, weighting, the total mass, which is four units minus one unit in this case. So if you multiply that out, you're going to get one um, unit of mass times meters divided by three units. Um, and that's negative because we have a negative sign here. So we end up with negative one third of a meter is the location of the center of mass. Okay, so if this was negative one meter, the center of mass is a third of the way to that, so right there. So pretty close to the center, but um, a little bit um, you know, towards the bigger side. All right, so what I want you to see from this um, is that this is a really nice trick. Um, if you had some situation where you had something that was almost a really nice shape, like say you had a cylinder of metal that you had constructed, but maybe you suspected that there was a small bubble in it, something like this that you couldn't see explicitly. Um, it turns out that it's actually really easy to calculate how that affects the center of mass. You just treat the little bubble as a negative mass that is removed from the, from the object.